Okay. So two types of inhibition. First one. First one is called compatibility inhibition. Okay. The competitive inhibition happens when you have an enzyme. So I'm going to draw the shape of an enzyme here. Oversimplified, of course. And what we have here is something, a region that is called the active site, right? Active site. And that active site is where the magic happens. In the active site, reaction or reaction progress. So you could imagine that when I hold the hand of Jill and Jim and I connect them and make them hold their own hands, you could imagine that my two hands are an active site. I connect things together. So the best way to control the reaction, an enzyme reaction, is to try to control this active site. Is to try to do something to this active site so that the reaction will not go on. So how do I do this? Well, I will use molecules that are called inhibitors. And the first one, the competitive inhibitor, is the easiest one to understand. Okay? So we have the active site here, and we could imagine that our substrate, in order to fit in the active site, probably has a shape that matches the active site. Right. Again, this is very, very simple. It doesn't really look like that, but you can understand it from what we see here. So this substrate here could be, so I'm just drawing the active site here, just the part of it, right? So I have my substrate fitting in that active site. And we could imagine that this enzyme, what actually it does is to cut this square in two, right? So once this is done, so this is like before it fits, the enzyme does what it needs to do, cuts this square into two triangles, and I have something like this. So I had my substrate here, my substrate is transformed into a product, right? So this is what we have, and this is what the enzyme does. Okay, perfect. If we want to use, or if the cell wants to use an inhibitive competitor, and the, re the biochemical reactions go on to a certain point, eventually this reaction needs to stop. Let me give you an example, okay? Um, if you um, are, you know, doing sports, okay? So you are doing whatever you're doing can imagine anything you want, right? So what you'll be doing, if you need to spend a lot of energy, you'll use fuel. And that fuel comes from different molecules, including sugars. And these sugars are going, you're going to burn, burn these sugars in order to create ATP, which is the energy source that all of our cells use, right? So you're going to burn all these sugars as you're running or cycling or whatever. You go back home, you sit down, you're tired, you live on the couch, you turn the TV on. Two hours later, your metabolism is going to go, they settle down. Two hours later, do you need to burn all of that sugar? Do you need, really need to produce that much ATP? You don't, right? It needs to eventually come to, a, you need to slow down the reaction. So in order to slow down the reaction, you need something that is going to control these reactions. 
you don't want to burn all the sugar you have when you're sleeping because you might end up with no calories at all when you wake up. So you need to control all of that. So the, the competitive inhibitor, here's how it goes. We have a molecule that is the substrate, and we have another molecule that is the inhibitor. The funny thing about these two molecules is that they really have pretty much the same shape, right? So they fit both of them in the active site. So what happens if I have this? What happens if I have this here instead of my substrate? What's going to happen here? Nothing. Because the inhibitor is not a substrate, the inhibitor will not be cut in the middle. Because the inhibitor, as a molecule, is very different from the substrate. So because it is different, the enzyme can not recognize it completely. It fits in the site, but is not being completely recognized. It's totally different as a molecular structure. The atoms and molecules found in the inhibitor are totally, totally different. So the reaction will not go. It's not the same thing. It's not the same molecule. It just fits. It's like you have a key to your house. And you know sometimes the funny thing about keys is that they fit, but they don't turn, right? They fit in there and they don't turn. So, you know, you come one night and you're frustrated. And you have a bunch of keys in your pocket and you want to get inside. So, you have a bunch of keys and, you know, of course, Murphy's Laws will predict that you'll never ever hit the first key, the good one will never be the first key, right? Especially the more frustrated you are, the less time you have, it'll be more like the end, like the last key you'll be using. Okay, so you have this key and it fits in your lock, but you are on a, in a, you're rushed. You turn and turn and you think, oh, that key. And then you turn and then bang, break the key, right? The key fits in the lock. <coughs> The inhibitor fits in the active site. The key stays there. Now, what's going to happen if you want to get in? You better break a window or something, because there's no way you're going to use the door. The key is in there. It's broken. It occupies the active site. But the key will never turn. So the active site of the enzyme cannot perform its action because there's something caught in there. Don't try to use your good key. It doesn't fit anymore. There's something in there. So the substrate here will not be able to fit. What happens to a reaction like that when you have an inhibitor? The reaction stops. Okay? So this is the competitive inhibitor. This is how it goes. Now, the other type of inhibition that we can find okay, is non-competitive. So we have competitive, and we can understand that, well, okay, the substrate and the inhibitor share a common feature, which is roughly the same shape. Chemically, they're different, so the enzyme cannot react with the inhibitor, but they share a structure, so they compete for the same active site. Both of them can fit in there. They compete for the same spot. Okay? The non-competitive inhibition goes like that. Substrate fits in the active site. Reaction happens. Two products. Perfect. That's situation number one. No inhibitor. Situation number two. Enzyme, active site, substrate, fits in the 
active site. Perfect. No competition. Nobody's going to try to steal that spot. Excellent. Accept. Accept this. Enzyme. Active site. Inhibitor site. Right here. So you see, the inhibitor site is not in the active site. Okay? Inhibitor fits in its site. And because you do something to that protein, it is a protein after all, because you do something, you change something here, protein are very easy to change shape. Because you change something here, even though it's far from the active site, the active, active site becomes deformed. It changes shape. You change, you poked it a little bit here, it's going to react. It changes shape. The substrate no longer fits in the um, in its active site. See? Non-competitive. They don't compete for the same site. It doesn't matter. They don't have the same shape anyway. It doesn't matter. But as the inhibitor reacts or interacts with the enzyme, the active site changes shape, and you block the reaction like that. Okay? There are two ways to block the reaction with inhibitors. Of course, this is overly simplified, but I think you get the idea of what inhibition means. Okay, I'm just going to stop this.